can see your background. I'm curious if there was a moment in your winemaking experience where you ever took a step back and you're like, damn, I can make really good wine. Like, I'm really good at this. Like, do you, do you, do you, is there a moment that comes to mind where you had that thought? No, not yet. <laughs> still pushing for I th- it. I think I'm still pushing. I think I, I kind of, I tend to have perfectionist tendencies, um, which has its pros and its cons, you know? So it's kind of like, you're always kind of searching and uh, improving. Um, but there is a point in, in your life when you have to, say, okay, you have to find some happiness in it too. So um, joy, you have to find joy, right? In what you do and, um, and sit back and, and not be overly critical of, of what you do. Cause I'm sure chefs that, you know, like, you know, do they always enjoy their food or are they thinking about it too much? You know, so, so winemakers can fall into that same pattern. And, and uh, it, it's, it, I have to remind myself to, to take a step back and take a deep breath and, and, um, but it's nice when people, you know, give feedback and they, you know, th- those are really comforting things and, and reinforcing, but I, you... I've always, I've always tried not to get, you know, I don't want to, I'm not an ego guy. I'm not a big right. head guy. I just stay humble and, and also always be a student. You know, I think for me, that's a big part of how I approach things. Always be a student, always learn, always, you know, have a, have a learner's mind i think for me that that is don't assume that you know everything because that's that's when you start making mistakes and yeah i don't know i think being a learner is is, i don't know it's 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 more fun i don't know and you make i think you'll make better wine in in the long run if you can evolve i appreciate you being so honest with that answer because i think that the, the the goal of that question is obviously to dive back into some of your experience and so what moments of winemaking maybe made you feel humbled? Like you're, you're taking a look at what you're doing and you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, I think in my time at, at um, you know, I became the assistant winemaker at Screaming Eagle in 2006. And, you know, I was solely production focused. And I think, um, yeah, that was like an aha moment. I was like, wow, I'm really in this place. But I realized I wanted to wear more hats. You know, I was, I was like, okay, I'm here. You know, like you're at this three-star Michelin. You're at the French Laundry you're doing this. And, and that's kind of, I was at this kind of top place. But I realized that I wanted to wear more hats than just production and kind of create something that was my own. And that was kind of an aha moment for me where... Yeah, there was a shift and the shift was to go out and, you know, kind of take a, you know, a big risk and give, give it a shot. You know, I was 20, I would have been, you know, I started when I was 26 and then I left when I was 28. So basically I started buying my first grapes around at, once I left at 28 years old. And, um, but that was kind of an aha moment for me. Um, in terms of like the shifting of my career because i yeah i wanted to interact with people and not just run a facility not just run a kitchen you know i wanted to do more um so um that was that was a big you know one of the big moments in my life for sure what was the environment like at screaming eagle you know it was it was, it's a, it was a small team, you know, we took over from the, it was with the new owners. So we took over from the previous owners, uh, Gene Phillips that sold it. And um, yeah, it was a small team. It was myself and an assistant and a, and a head winemaker who was more of kind of consulting. Uh, um, and then, and then it was, then it was the vineyard crew. So that was kind of like, it was like me and the vineyard crew kind of like lived at the property. And that was, those were really special moments and, and talk about good food. Um, those guys can cook. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in touch with those guys today because, you know, we've got, we, we bonded over those, over those couple of years. It's kind of a humble place. You know, it's not a grand chateau. It, it, it's, it's a ranch, you know, it's a ranch. And that's what I, I think it was what makes it special. 
that is it's just kind of low key and like you know you just roll up and you know have some carnitas and drink some stream eagle and and, and, Live and the dream. that's like that's the thing that people don't really get to enjoy you know is like the place so uh, it, it it's it's one of those the first time i ever drove on property it was like okay i get it i get why this place is special um you know you have those experiences when you when you visit certain vineyards and you're like i want to make wine from this place but but that's kind of what it was like and, and you know being young and and yeah there was a lot of pressure and but i kind of had the mentality of like it's just wine we're just we're just making wine it's just from this special place and <laughs> it's very expensive and you know make sure and empty out the pump after every uh uh, movement so, because every little drop is is worth quite a bit you have that aha moment where you say i want something a little bit more than 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 where i'm at why not go get the experience somewhere else where you can wear a couple more hats why make the decision to go start your own thing boy that's a really good question um i did go so i did i did not just stop fully working i was able to buy my first grapes but in turn i was i worked um with philippe melka consulting for um, a couple of vintages so that would have been 08 and 09 and then after that to really you know because this is all self-funded so in 2010 so i'd made 08 and 09 and then 20 and i made that at the Farella vineyard in coombsville and then in 2010 I started sourcing Farella fruit, and that became the first um, De Costanza wine. Because you guys didn't I, put out 08 and 09, right? Like you guys just no, I sold those you. off as shiners. Wow. Um, just because there wasn't continuity in the vineyard, and I wanted to find a place where, you know, there was a really good relationship with the grower, and they wanted to kind of help, you know, maybe someone on the younger side. And that was the Farella family they were they were really very supportive so for let's see about five years i would help them with their wines and make my wine in the same facility and that really allowed me to get my brand off the ground so you're spending that time doing the consulting and seeing the vintages kind of like all come together can you lay out for maybe if there's like a young winemaker or a young psalm or even a chef who's kind of like, this cooking thing's great, but I may I, I really want to do wine someday. What yeah. are those skills that you're like observing, developing, identifying that you have a gap in? Like when you're spending this time and you're learning all of this stuff, because clearly like you're you're saying there's a there's a frustration of being just at this place where you want to wear more hats, but then there's where you are now, and I think like. I want to, I want to fill in some of the gaps for folks of like what you were able to develop during that time. Well, I think I wanted to, I think I also wanted to create something that was mine. I think I, I think I ended up finding that wine was so personal and I was putting so much of my effort into it. And I don't know if this is like a young person thing or like I was hard to give that up, you know? And I said, cause I didn't come from wine, you know, I'm not from a wine family so this is this is, was all kind of new to me yeah you know you're an artist and you've created this product and when you put yourself into it it you know it kind of feels like yours you know but then you, but then if you you know you have to give that up you know if you're working for somebody else i think my perspective is different now i think when i was 26 years old i think i had a different perspective we all did. uh yeah we all did right for sure but what i'd say to a younger person i mean what i did i so i went to davis and then i, I started working harvest abroad that's what so I worked in Argent so worked in Italy and Argentina and South Africa and really trying to understand what what great wine is or was because what great wine is is it's very subjective and you know culturally it's subjective too. So yeah, I would say go get experience in, in the wine world, you know, and then bring that back. You know, bring that back here. You know, I, I always I was like, go work in other chef's kitchens and then you can find your style. I had that on my list of questions to ask you because that quote came out as, as we were just kind of doing some homework on you is the advice to go work a harvest abroad and then come back. 
what specifically about working abroad stands out to you? Is it the change in the environment? Is it they're using different methods than what we use here domestically or the age of the vines that you're working with? Like, why not, if you're living in New York, why not go to California to quote unquote get your experience? And then like, what's special about going abroad in your mind? Um, I just think it maybe helps to just see how people view wine and see how people live life and see wine, how people interact with wine. I just think it gives you better perspective. I mean, I also, you know, working in Tuscany, I was like, wow, these grapes are a lot less sweet than they are here in, in California, you know, and tasting these wines, you know, they taste, they taste great. Like maybe we don't need to pick as ripe as we do and still make really great wine, but, you know, just as an example. So I think that kind of stuff is important because you know, if you just come and work in California and you work for the same house, um, not to say you won't evolve, I think you, I think you will evolve, but I think to have those other experiences in your back pocket, you know, kind of, yeah, are, are important. 